Looking for creative ways to use a stock photo on your blog? I've got you covered. In this video, I'm going to show you how to take one stock photo and use it eight different ways on your blog so people can't even tell. You just look totally cohesive, branded, and put together. Hey, I'm Sarah, and I help coaches and course creators use design to look more polished and professional online so they can make more money. Now let's get into that video. If you take a look at image number one here, this is an example of just using the picture as is. It's a beautiful picture, it has nice colors. If your brand is very much about working from home and having a neutral color palette, maybe with some pops of yellow, this would be a great image for you. So you could just use it as is. But as we see here in image number two, if you add a white overlay on top, so this is just putting a layer across the entire image, filling it with white and turning down the transparency so you can see through to the back. And then you add like a thin border on it and some text, then people don't necessarily notice that you're using the same image. And also you'll notice here, I cropped into a corner of that main image that I showed in example one. So it just looks still in keeping with this branded look and feel, but with this text, it almost feels like a completely new image. Number three is similar to number two in that it has an overlay, but here you can use your brand colors. If you have multiple brand colors, then this is a way to use this image multiple times and no one will ever be the wiser. Next up is the blurry background technique. Now real quick, before I go over this, I just want to ask, Tell me in the comments below what's your favorite program to use for these kind of graphics because I love Photoshop, but I also love Canva, especially for my friends who don't like Photoshop or aren't ready to use it. And I know that a lot of people like to do these techniques in Canva and you 100% can. So I'm wondering, is Canva what you use or do you use something else like PicMonkey or I don't know, Pixlr or some other program? Drop it in the comments. I want to hear. Okay, so this blurry background image. This is such a fun technique. It's still using that same original image. I've just zoomed into a different spot on it, but I made the background blurry just slightly and also a little dark so that we could put more text on top and you'd still be able to read it. So this is an excellent technique. If you've dropped text on top of an image and you're like, I can't quite read what it says, if you just blur out the background a little bit, it makes it much easier to read. I've also added a little bit of a drop shadow text on this text. So that's another technique you can use. All right, now number five is super easy, especially with this image. This is a mock-up. So if you have an image like this where there is a monitor on the screen or a laptop or someone holding a phone, you can put something on that screen. And here I just cropped into just the monitor area. And although this is really simple, I just have white and the word mock-up on it. <laughs> you could definitely use this to showcase um, your new program that you're selling or uh, a picture of you coaching or um, showing how you have Zoom meetings every week that people can pay to join. So this is an excellent way to use the mock-up technique to get more mileage out of your images. Number six is to crop a bunch of squares out of your original image and use them in Instagram. So the beauty of the image that I've chosen here is it has a lot of interesting detail all throughout. So I can crop into any number of areas on this photo and find neat little vignettes of like just the yellow folders or just the plant or part of that screen where I have the mock-up or the other side of the room where there's another shelf and some cute tchotchkes on it. And I could cut out, easily cut out nine squares to fill up nine days in my Instagram posts and have a really cohesive looking Instagram feed that's all tied together in color and in style. And then just write your captions and that's where you put all your text. Number seven is to use your image for Pinterest. Now you can do this by just grabbing two sections of the image and then stacking them on top of one another and then putting a white strip in between or whatever color you want and then text in that in-between area. It's perfectly sized Pinterest. It has the look and feel of your image, um, but it's just a super fast, easy way to make a Pinterest image for your next blog post. 
Number eight is a really fun one. It's a little bit trickier. It's called a mask. You can't always accomplish this in your program of choice, but when you can, it's super cool. So basically what this is, is it's a transparent PNG. So the transparent part is the text. So the text acts as kind of like a shape, which is a hole cut out of this big white rectangle. So you can save that out as a PNG and that means that the hole you cut out stays transparent and then use a graphics program that allows you to layer images on top of one another and just slide your photo underneath the layer with the mask on top of it and voila you have another super cool and really fun and dramatic way to show the same image on your blog or in your social media in a new way that people can't even tell. So now that you know how creative you can be with these stock photos and how you can use one stock photo creatively up to eight, maybe even more ways on your blog, you're gonna wanna know where to find them and how to use design software to repurpose them. So check out the videos on screen right now to get started.